Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to talk to you about rake controllers because um, well I got a very interesting question the other day there about what what happens when a rake controller dies in a server is all my data lost and yes this is a very good question and something that I think a lot of people thinks that there is a lot of vital information stored in the rake controller and if that dies all your array is just gone and you have to start all over and it's not entirely true because uh, the RAID configuration is actually stored on the drives so the drives knows how they are set up and if you take the broken RAID controller out of the server and put in a new RAID controller you can actually put the drives back in or never take them out in the first place and you can import the configuration that is stored on the drives into the RAID controller so now the RAID controller knows how all of these drives are configured individually and um, it will run as before so um, uh, end of video we're done have a nice day <laughs> okay so of course this is um, easier said than done because uh, this is the fastest way to get rid of all of your data in no time whatsoever when you're doing this operation but it's not much difference to if you don't have a RAID controller and you have to do it in software if you have an HPA in there and all of your arrays are controlled by software and the operating system well if the operating system totally fucks up uh, you're kind of in the same situation you have to um, uninstall or reinstall the operating system and there might be drives where all your data is on that is unaffected but you want that data out of there to work with the new operating system that you're putting in so also on that point you have to be very careful what you're doing and not mess it up because then all your data is lost you can replace the operating system but you have to be very careful and the same thing with the RAID controller you can replace the RAID controller but you have to be very careful because it's really easy to press the wrong button and just wipe everything and at that point it's a lot harder and can even be really expensive RAID controllers are widely available uh, they're costly this one is uh, multiple thousand crowners and um, yeah you can you can you can take a broken one out and you can replace it with a new one if um, if it breaks or but yeah they don't break much there's no moving parts or anything they can overheat and they can crash some capacitors but to be quite honest I have not replaced many rate controllers I'm trying to remind myself if I've changed any at all I do believe that I have changed some rate controllers but that it actually turned out to be another fault like uh, firmware incompatibility or something it wasn't really the rate controllers fault but at the time it seemed like the thing that was messing up they don't fail a lot another question that I get a lot is still the thing about rate controllers versus HPA and it's a religion and for some systems you you really need an HPA this is not actually an HPA but it looks like an HPA so I'm, I'm waving this around um, because because those systems need to make their own software rate to be any smart at all that could be on raid which um, well you need an, an HPA to, to run a good on raid system there are definitely ups and downs to a software rate system what you are doing with a software rate system is you're just taking the whole server and you're downgrading it to become a, a, a rate controller so instead of having dedicated hardware performing your uh, storage operations well you're using the, your entire system to do that and it will do that it will uh, give you a penalty with um, performance and as long as you're not in performance need that is not an issue whatsoever you can do that just fine but if you wanna have a high performance system working and also be a storage system then you run into trouble 
um, you might not run into trouble if you're not storing a lot or if you're not doing it very fast but if you put in 20 SSDs or NVMEs in that server and you start demanding high performance on your storage well there's not going to be much CPU power left for you to use for something else I'm about to buy some servers from work and these servers are going to be running a system called Lockpoint and Lockpoint it collects locks from all other systems in the entire company and it stores them and it sorts them out and this system um, which is running on a Linux uh, something 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 and um, it actually uses ZFS but as ZFS is not fast enough together with what it's also doing the people from Lockpoint has actually said that it needs a RAID controller and then we'll install ZSF on top of that so so you get the hardware to do the storage um, operations and you get ZFS on top of that to do some of the smart things that well ZFS does do some smart things uh, that the RAID controller does not do most of these are pretty stupid they will do what they do but very quickly and without um, asking the processor for too much of its time and if you actually go through the list and see what a RAID controller can do on the web pages well it's not as if it's not doing anything it's just doing a lot of stuff that it never tells you about just the thing that if a drive dies on this the RAID controller will manage everything the system can tell you that it has a dead drive and you go and you pop out that drive and put in a new drive and immediately the RAID controller will oh I have a new drive we're gonna put that into production and it handles everything if it's on a RAID 5 or RAID 6 it makes sure to rebuild so that you're good to go again it also does a lot of other things I think we should go to the computer and see some of that okay so here we are at the computer and I'm gonna go directly to the screen and we can see what I've been looking at here this is the new um, Lenovo Think Center SR650 version 2 server and this is David Watt um, he works at the Lenovo and he does a lot of presentations of the new Lenovo stuff I'm very I'm very jealous because he gets to play with all the new stuff but if you check this list over here there is internal storage and then there is controllers for internal storage so we're gonna pick that one and we get this long list of, um, of controllers that you can put in this server uh, at the very top we can see that there is some onboard SATA software RAID mode um, yeah not gonna not gonna mess with that and we have something for some NVMe that is also being more and more available so that you can put RAID on your NVMe drives um, to enable RAID support for non-Intel NVMe SSDs okay and then we get some PCI 3 8 ports and PCI 3 16 port PCI 4 8 port and, and PCI 4 uh, 16 to 32 ports so 32 ports is a lot of of hard drives in a server um, but we actually just need to let's just check one of these this is a pretty normal one that's an it's, it's a good one but it's uh, it's not the biggest one it's only for eight drives so we'll copy that and we'll go to a new window and we we'll, we know we'll press there and put in that controller and we should get a good page probably that top one and it will tell us everything that this controller does and um, yeah it should have some some feature here technical specifications and further down here it is all the features that this does NVMe drive support, a Mega RAID fast path SSD performance acceleration. That sounds very fancy. It does something like online expansion, which means that you can add a drive while the system is running and you can get more storage available without shutting down the system. Not a bad thing. But there are some other stuff that the RAID controller does without you even having to do anything uh, one of them is consistency check for background data integrity where it goes through the, the data and makes sure that the data is good 
This is especially for, for RAID systems. It makes sure that the, the data is equally on those um, on those drives and that there is no um, inconsistencies. <laughs> so that if there is, it, it fixes that. There is another one. There is a patrol for media scan and repair. So it actually goes through the hard drives and checks for something like bad sectors and uh, registrates that if there is something wrong with the drives it will it will do that when it has the time for it so when the server is not too busy it will go and and do some controlling and make sure that all your data is good and it will just do that in the background without you ever being bothered about it and that's why the rate controller can come out and tell you if there is a predicted failure that is when it has been doing these controls and finds that oh this drive is starting to act up. I have now uh, found this amount of bad sectors and moved data and yeah, this is not going well. And it will tell you about it. And at that point, it's, it's time to replace that drive. Another one is a drive roaming. <laughs> and it gives you a little explanation of what it actually is. So um, if the drives are, have been taken out of the server and put back into the server in the wrong order, it will still figure it out because the, the information is on the drive and not on the rate controller. So it doesn't check if, oh, I have this and this and this drive in port, this and this and that, and they have to be in a rate six. So you can imagine if you took uh, 16 drives out of the server and put them back in, then your uh, mirror and your rate five and your rate six could get totally messed up uh, putting the drives back in but the system will actually handle that and i believe you don't even have to ask it or do anything it will just oh there's my drives again and you're doing this and you're doing that and all is good to go so a rate controller does a lot of stuff in the background that you never know about or it you will only know about it when it comes and tells you that this uh, this drive is not doing too good anymore you should replace it it has actually done a lot of work in the background figuring that out, moving data, making sure that your data is still safe in there. But it's not as if a software storage solution can't do that. It's just, but when you have a rate controller, you have dedicated hardware to do that thing. And if you go and look at a very high performance storage controller from like Dell EMC is what I work with, you actually have a very powerful server. We have some, um, Dell EMC uh, Isilon boxes and one of these boxes are managing like 15 spinning disks and it has some uh, faster SSD storage so uh, it has kind of some slow and some fast and it, it makes that into some tiers so all of this box which has two CPUs and 96 gigabytes of RAM is more or less doing what a rate controller is doing it scale up of course a $400 rate controller is not going to be able to replace all of that system where you have like it's a dual CPU server managing 15 drives and two SSDs or something like that and making that into a tier and having some fast network card it's a it's a whole server that runs as a, a a rate controller the system does have access to some really fast networking in the back um, talking to other Isilon boxes and also making that data available to the network and the servers that are using that data so yeah in that case you're just using a whole server as a storage server and it has enough to do it it's busy uh, managing 15 drives and two SSDs and so the very short version if you have a server that needs uh, high performance storage like this lock point server that I'm building and buying at work uh, it has thousands of little files that it needs to maintain and do stuff with it needs a rate controller to do that to offload the CPUs in this case the CPUs are still being used for ZFS but then it has more performance to do the specific ZFS operations that only ZFS can do and the rate controller can't do but working together and instead of having 10 servers doing it, I think we are down to four servers or something like that. It's not even as if I can buy some cheap CPUs. They actually also have to be pretty good in those systems. If this is just for your home server and you're just storing your film collection and stuff for the home use, 
no problem. The software solution is plenty good enough for that and in that case you don't need to spend $400 on a rate controller, that's for sure. Also, if you're building a very big enterprise open source storage solution and, and putting drives directly in servers, well, it can also be beneficial not to use rate controller but just um, kind of downgrading the whole system to being a rate controller and just having whole servers, just being the storage controller, maybe even buying some servers that are meant for this. I actually have one here. Uh, this one, the Hewlett Packard Cloud system here, it has 12 internal large form factor disks in here and it has an HPA. It would be perfect for that. Put some Unraid on that um, or some Linux with ZFX and you would have a perfect storage controller that the whole server is then just going to be the storage controller. It could probably do other stuff depending on how much demand there is for the storage and um, how much output it can give out the back depending on how many IOs and how many data it's transferring and ish forth and back. So there is still a lot of instances where standalone servers it makes very good sense to put a RAID controller in it but if you're building a storage cluster with multiple servers it might be a better option to go ZFS and, and not have a storage controller in there but still you might even get better performance if ZFS doesn't have to do everything. I do not have many storage controllers for sale in my shop but do go visit myplayhouse.dk forward slash shop and see if there is something that I can help you with anyway and links is in the description have to promote my own stuff sometimes right so uh, yeah thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye